Dear viewers, greetings. In this present video, we are going to see about endospore staining. The aim of the endospore staining is to differentiate and identify the bacterial endospores and vegetative cells from given bacterial culture. Endospores uh, in adverse conditions like nutrient limitation, extreme temperatures or dehydration, uh, some bacteria like Clostridium species and Bacillus species uh, produce the endospores. Endospores are metabolically inactive structures that are resistant to physical and chemical damage. The endospores allows the bacterium to survive harsh conditions by protecting the genetic material of the cells. Uh, once conditions are favorable for the growth, uh, spores germinate and bacteria grows continues. The endospores may be uh, spherical, subspherical or oval in shape. They may differ in locations within the cells that is uh, central location, terminal location or uh, subterminal location and they may or may not swell the cell. Endospores are difficult to strain with uh, standard straining techniques because uh, they are impermeable to the dyes typically which are used for the straining process. The next is uh, principle. Uh, in 1922, uh, Dorner published a method for straining the endospores. But uh, that method employed a lengthy heating step. Uh, so, Schaffer and Fulton modified the Donner's method in 1933 to make the process faster. In basic laboratories, the simple endospore staining technique is the Schaffer Fulton technique because of its easy and it is rapid to identify the bacteria and the endospores. And the endospore staining is a differential staining technique that is used to, to uh, distinguish the vegetative cells and the endospores. The stains and declarizers used for the endospore staining are 0.5 percentage malachite green primary strain. Uh, the steam acts as a moderant, the water acts as a declarizing agent and the safranine acts as a counter strain. And uh, in the endospore staining method or Saffel-Felton method, the malachite green primary strain along with the use of uh, steam heat moderant, uh, which, softens, which softens the endospores covering and allowing penetration of the dye into the spores. The malachite green dye binds to the endospores mildly and uh, washed with the water, that is the declarizing agent, without fixing, it easily washes away and that's why the application of the steam heat is very important to allow the dye to penetrate the endospores. And finally, the safranine, the counter strain is then applied as any of the cells uh, which have been declarized. At the end of the staining process, vegetative cells will be red and the endospores will be a dark green colored structure. The materials required for the endospore staining are inoculation loop, microscopic slide, bacterial culture, 0.5 percentage malachite green dye, water, safranine, microscope, and immersion oil. Procedure Clean and dry the microscopic slide thoroughly. Prepare a smear of culture, add dry and heat fits. Uh, place the heat fixed bacterial slide over the screen water bath and then apply the primary strain 0.5 percentage malachite cream. After that, allow the slide to sit over the steaming water bath for 5 minutes, uh, reapplying the strain if they begins to dry over. And next, uh, remove the slide from the water bath, cool and rinse the slide with water until the water runs clear. And finally, uh, flood the sphere with the counter strain safranine for one minute, then rinse few specimens under the oil immersion with a compound light microscope. Observation and results. At the end of the endospore staining technique, the endospores appears in green color and the vegetative colors appeared in red color. And this table shows the endospore staining characters of some selected bacterial isolates. The first one is the Clostridium septicum and it is a thin gram positive bacilli with numerous ovoid or citron shaped subterminal spores are present in this uh, Clostridium septicum. The second one is Clostridium perfringens. It is relatively a large boscar shaped uh, gram positive bacilli and the spores are usually present but the demonstration of the uh, spore is frequently difficult in this Clostridium furfringens bacterium. 
The third one is the Clostridium tetani. It is a gram positive bacilli with a presence of round terminal spores. The fourth one is uh, Clostridium uh, sordelli. It is a gram positive bacilli with clumps of uh, free spores and bacteria districted with ovoid subterminal spores. The Clostridium uh, tertium. Uh, in this, it is a thin gram positive bacilli with uh, subterminal spores. The sixth one is uh, Bacillus cereus. Uh, it is a, a oval sporoid bacterium and it may be observed uh, centrally or uh, subterminally and the cells are not swollen in the areas where the spore is located. And finally, Bacillus anthracis. It is a large gram positive bacilli with the individual cells having a square of or slightly concave veins. Often, the organisms are arranged in chains uh, that have the appearance of uh, bamboo. Uh, the spore stain uh, shows terminal or uh, subterminal spores that do not swell the vegetative cells. Dear viewers, thank you for your support. Thank you.